Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'm going to show you the most important tips and tricks of Moto H50 Pro. By the way guys, I've already posted a dedicated video for the best features where I've talked about all the features offered by this phone. So definitely check out that video as well. Link will be in the description. By the way guys, do like this video or dislike this video. Either way, it helps the channel a lot. Now with that said, first I'll start off with the navigation gestures. Now this phone by default comes with a 3 button navigation bar, but we can change it to the navigation gestures. Once you enable it, you can swipe from the bottom of the screen to go home, swipe and hold for recent apps. To go back, you can swipe from the left side corner or the right corner to go back a step. To trigger Google Assistant, you can swipe from the bottom left corner or bottom right corner diagonally and it will trigger Google Assistant. Finally, we can also swipe left or right on the bottom bar to quickly switch between the recent applications. So these are the navigation gestures, they work really well and I would definitely recommend them over the regular 3 button navigation bar. Next, I'm going to show you how to open split screen mode. For that, first we need to go to the recent apps page and then click on the app icon and then select split screen. Once you do that, that application will open up in the top window and we can select the secondary application from recent apps or the app drawer. Now, this is something that you can find on all of the phones, but on this phone, we also have a nice gesture. You can enable the toggle from here. Now, once you enable this feature, you can just swipe from the left edge of the screen to the right and back to open the current application in split screen mode. And then you can select the secondary application from the app drawer. Now even though most of the applications support split screen mode, there are still some applications that might not support this feature. So to fix that, first we need to enable developer options. For that, go to settings, about page and then click on the build number 7 times. Once you do that, developer options will be enabled. Now go to the developer options, scroll all the way to the bottom and enable force activities to be resizable and then restart your phone. Once you do that, you will be able to use all applications in split screen mode. Next, we have a new sidebar on this phone. Once you enable this feature, you'll see a small bar on the right side. You can just swipe on it to access the sidebar. Now, once you click on any of these applications and it'll open that application in a pop-up window. You can actually customize this list. You can choose between applications, tools and contacts as well. Like you can just click on a contact and make a call. It's super convenient. You can also move around this sidebar by just dragging it around. Next, I'm going to show you how you can open applications in floating windows or pop-up windows or just in the freeform mode. First way is by using the sidebar, which I've just shown you. Next way is from the recent apps. For that, go to the recent apps page. From here, tap on the app icon that you want to open in the pop-up window. Next, select freeform. Now, once you do that, that application will open up in a floating window. By the way guys, this freeform option is only available when the sidebar feature is enabled. Like if you disable the sidebar completely, you won't even see this option. You can also see a floating window shortcut under the app in the recent apps page. You can also click that to open an application in a floating window. By the way, you can open multiple mini windows at the same time, but 5 is the maximum number. Next, I'm going to show you how to take screenshots. Now, the default way is to use the buttons. Just long press the volume down button and the power button both at the same time to take a screenshot. On this phone, we also have the three finger screenshot gesture. So to use that, you just need to enable this toggle. And once you're done, just touch and hold the screen with three fingers at the same time to take a screenshot. Once you get a screenshot, you'll see a preview and some extra options to edit the screenshot, share it, or even do a direct Google image search, which is a pretty cool feature. Next, I'm going to show you how to change the default applications like the default phone dialer, SMS application or your browser. You just need to come to this place and from here, we can change our default SMS application, browser or even your home launcher. Next, if you want to display the battery percentage on the status bar, you just need to enable this toggle. Once you're done, you can see the battery percentage on the status bar. Next, this one also has dark theme and you can enable it directly from the display settings or the notification toggles. You can just touch it and all the system UI elements change to the dark theme. Even some stock applications like phone dialer, SMS application and even some Google applications like YouTube, Gmail all change to the dark theme. From settings, you can also configure the dark theme to turn on at a specific time and turn off at a specific time as well. Next, we have fast torch. Once you enable this feature, you can just do a chopping gesture to turn on the flash and do the chopping gesture again to turn off the flash. This is a pretty handy gesture. 
Next we have Quick Capture. Once you enable this feature, you can just twist your phone to open the camera application. Once the camera application is open, you can again twist your phone to switch between the front camera and the rear camera. Once again, this gesture works anywhere, anytime. Next we have Media Controls. Now once you enable this feature, whenever the display is off, you can long press the volume up button to change to the next song and you can also long press the volume down button to change to the previous song. These are pretty handy media controls, especially if you listen to a lot of music. Next, this one also has Dolby Atmos. It's enabled by default for the speaker and for headset, you can turn it on or turn it off. We have different categories and you get different audio experience for different categories. Going on next, we can also create our own theme on this phone. Once again, we can do it directly from the Moto Apps personalization section. From here, we can choose our own favorite font, change the accent colors, choose icon shape, and even the layout of the home screen. If you really want to personalize your phone, you can give it a try. Next, we have game controls. Once again, you can enable this feature directly from the Moto Apps game section. From here, you can add the list of games that are installed on your phone. Now, whenever you open any of these games from the list, you get a floating button on the left. And when you click it, it gives you a lot of game controls. Like you can block notifications, calls, take a screenshot, record the screen, or even open some applications in a floating window. So we can play the game while using some applications in this floating window. Next, we have new control center. Now, by default, we get the stock Android control center where this is how it looks. And if you don't like this look, you can switch to the modern style. And once you change it, you can swipe from the right side of the screen to access the toggles and swipe from the left side of the screen to access notifications. Once you are on either of these pages, you can also swipe left or right to switch between notifications and toggles. This is just like on iOS. Next, we have a cool security feature on this phone called Pinpad Scramble. Once you enable this feature, every time you try to unlock your phone, Pinpad will be scrambled. It just makes your phone a bit more secure. I would definitely recommend you to turn it on. Next, we have another security feature called Lock Network and Security. Now, once you enable this feature, you can't turn off your Wi-Fi or do any other changes directly from the lock screen. You need to first unlock your phone and then and then you can do changes to your network. This is another important security feature which I would definitely recommend you to turn it on. So guys, these are all the most important tips and tricks that you should know about your phone. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video. With that said, this is Nikhil signing off. See you in my next video.